Hi, how you doing? Today we're going to cook another vegetarian thing. Well, we are vegetarians. Um, and the ingredients are some broccoli. We've prepared it in advance because we shoot this in one take. Okay? So it saves a bit of time. Uh, broccoli, onions, carrots, sorry, those are sweet potato in fact. Carrots, some garlic and some dried apricots, okay? And um, it's a very, very simple dish which we're going to flavour with some fennel seed, some dried chilies which are quite hot, and some dried uh, oregano or oregano depending on where you come from, a bit of salt and um, some passata. Just, just a word on the passata though. Um, this is passata rustica, crushed tomatoes, okay? Uh, it's a hundred percent tomatoes. There is no citric acid in this. Cheerio, okay? It's a very good brand. Um, it's worth seeking these these brands out and this type of passata out because it's so much nicer than the acidity regulator they put in others, which is citric acid. Gives it a bit of an acrid taste, and you end up having to add sugar to the dish, which we don't really want to. Okay, so what we're going to do? We're going to get the heat on. Today we're using stainless steel pans, so it's a bit more tension, a bit more effort, because if you don't don't watch it and stir it, it's going to stick more often to the bottom. But stainless steel really holds on to the heat and provides a nice even uh, heat across the bottom of the pan, so in fact stuff cooks really nicely in stainless steel, so that's why we're going to use it today. And I love this pan, I can't pronounce the make, it's made in France, they make great pans there and it's incredibly heavy. Uh, I mean, it really is. You could knock somebody out with this. Uh, yeah, okay. Right, so we're going to get this heat up on, a, again, a fairly high heat, okay, to start with anyway. Stainless steel with a solid bottom like this, it gets very hot eventually. It takes a while to, and it holds on to the heat. So we'll need to watch the heat as we go along. Olive oil, extra virgin. I always cook with it, okay. And uh, I, yes, I add quite a lot because I don't see the point in just adding a little drizzle of it. The point of the oil is it carries the flavor, okay? It carries all the flavor, which infuses through the dish and it adds a lovely rich silkiness to the dish. So I think it's really important. I mean, if you're worried about your waistline, uh, uh, then just eat less of it. Um, yeah, I know I should take my own advice anyway. Um, so, what we're going to do in the oil as it's warming up, we're going to put some fennel seed in. Again, you'll notice I don't really measure stuff. And it doesn't have to be fennel seed. It could be whatever is in your herb and spice cupboard and whatever you like, the flavors of what you like. Okay? I happen to like fennel seed, but there's also a good practical reason for using it. Fennel seed freshens things up. It's not for no reason when you go for a Southeast Asian meal somewhere, perhaps in a Bangladeshi curry house, that at the end they'll give you fennel seed to chew on. And in fact, um, in the Indian subcontinent, they chew that often after a meal. It freshens up the breath. In this case, it freshens up the taste. So you haven't got any dank heaviness. Not that there would be, because we haven't got any meat here. Um, but it does freshen up the taste very nicely. So we want to just warm those fennel seeds up, watching the oil, because extra virgin olive oil can burn and smoke very quickly, and then it in fact it's no good you've got to throw it away and start again so be very careful with that but I am watching the pan and as ever I'm a bit impatient and this is a this is a fairly quick dish so you know I don't want to be stood here forever infusing that particular flavor also at the start I'm going to add my dried oregano because it sort of gets amalgamated into the oil a couple of good pinches of that is what I fancy using today for a bit of heat I'm going to use one of these dried chilies Okay, these are sort of, these are probably from, from India somewhere actually. We buy them locally and you just use a pair of scissors. I mean, you know what, if I was just cooking for myself, maybe I'd put two or three in, but one is actually enough. It gives it a nice background warmth, okay? And just get that infusing nicely. Everything is still fine. You can smell if the oil is getting too hot. Okay, it starts to take on a funny old smell, but you watch it as well when I mean, it's not bubbling or boiling. So 
we're, we're fine, we're good to go. As soon as we hit it with the onions, it's just coming up now, but as soon as we get the onions in, it'll calm things down a bit and there's much less chance the oil will burn. Okay, so let's go in with the onions. Put a sizzle there, so we know we're up to the right temperature. Right. So, I would say it's a uh, medium high heat at the moment, and we're going to sweat off these onions so that they become somewhat translucent. Um, there's no need to, to, to take them back to caramelization or anything, okay? Uh, we've added our flavors. As I say, you can add Obviously, I've got a spice cupboard here that's got a lot of different things in, and over time you, you sort of build up something like this, and uh, so you've got a lot of choice. There is one other thing I'm going to put in here that I almost forgot. At the moment, I'm really liking crushed white pepper, so these are whole white peppercorns, okay? They are quite expensive, actually. It's, it's one of the more expensive spices, and I crush them up with a pestle and mortar here, and I throw them in at this stage. Again, that way they get, you know, they get cooked out in the oil properly and they really infuse that heat in there. It's not too much heat, but it's a lovely background flavor. Okay. You can smell that actually. You can smell that wonderful white peppercorn aroma coming, that aromatic spiciness coming up off the, the pan. You can see the steam rising there. Yes, that's why kitchens can smell so good sometimes. Now, the other thing we put in at this stage, chopped carrots, peeled and chopped, about this dice, okay? And uh, some people would put celery at this stage, but I happen to not be a big fan of celery. I don't particularly like the taste, but it's one of those holy trinities in what they, in what cooks call a mirepoix, or lots of little feet, perhaps, I think you would call it. Uh, the French seem to have taken over culinary terms, so that is often used in kitchens to mean this base layer of flavor, of aromatic flavor that you build a sauce up with to, to start with. So it's the same for any sauce, onions, carrots, uh, and celery, if you're into celery, but I'm not particularly into celery. The carrots give you the sweetness, okay? And I think that's quite important. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, but not much. Okay, just a tiny bit of salt. It helps to break down the onions and the carrots at this stage. I'm not adding too much because we're going to use one of these Knorr vegetable stock jellies. And they have some salt in. And they will melt into that dish and provide that sort of backbone, if you will, of, of flavor. And of course, uh, when they make these, they add various herbs and things. Um, so we haven't got to spend, you know, an hour or so making a vegetable stock and reducing it down, which saves a bunch of time. And actually, these are brilliant. Uh, what else do we need to add at this stage? At this stage, really, we're adding all the sort of hard stuff. So the sweet potato, lovely sweet potato, brilliant. We're gonna add this too, because it's one of the sort of more firmer vegetables we've got here at this stage. But actually, it cooks relatively quickly compared to potatoes, for instance. Uh, and certainly compared to parsnip, it cooks more quickly than that does. All right, so uh, just going to stir this all in so that oil is coating everything. All right. Now, what we're going to do at this stage is put a lid on that pan, and somewhere in here, I have a lid. Uh, Unfortunately, it's a stainless steel one, so we're not going to be able to see anything for the moment. <laughs> but that makes the pan like an oven, okay? So the heat, it holds in the heat, makes it like an oven, and we're sort of roasting those vegetables now. It's not too dissimilar to roasting this in an oven. I mean, I could take this pan and put it in the oven, uh, but I prefer a more direct heat, and this really is cooker top cooking. We do have some broccoli here to go in as well, and we have some garlic and some dried apricots, which provide a lovely tart sweetness um, and an interesting texture. Um, 
I don't put the garlic in yet because that also can burn if you cook it too much. And I don't want to cook it too much because it kills it and it destroys the, uh, I think they call it allicins, the proteins in it that provide us with so much health apparently. Um, so yes, I, I, I'm holding on to that for a minute and the broccoli obviously I don't want to overcook it so I'm not putting it in from the start. I, I just want to sort of kind of lightly cook it really so it's got a bit of bit of bite, a bit of firmness left and, and, and texture left to it. Otherwise you just end up with a slop and we're not making a broccoli puree. Um, we are going to add some passato, we talked about that earlier. So there's a couple more ingredients to go. That is kind of it, okay? We're, we're building up the layers of this dish and it's really very simple. Really what we're waiting for now is for these vegetables in here to soften down, cook out, amalgamate all their flavours and come together in a nice sort of unctuous kind of stew, really, with a, a, a sort of rich sort of gravy which we're going to try and aim for. So we're going to put some hot water from the kettle, add the passata and try and get the balance right. Uh, you know, I, 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 I happen to like stuff that, that has a rich gravy and, and that may be my, my heritage and things and how I grew up, a lot of things were cooked in a rich, spicy gravy. So it's whatever you fancy. If you don't fancy a spicy, rich gravy, then cook it with less liquid. Oops. The point is, the point is, don't be stuck to a set recipe, okay? Because that's really very limiting. Cook according to what your tastes are. But look at the technique and see how these things are put together because they're all put together in exactly the same way. It's just the ingredients are different, okay? Now, there's one thing we don't have here that I could talk about at this stage, okay? I'm going to stir this pan because being stainless steel, this stuff will stick if I don't keep on top of it. It's not sticking yet, but it will be soon. Now, one of the things that we could also add but I'm not adding, in this time of austerity, is some white wine, or we could add red wine. We don't have or, but we also don't have any. Um, okay, put the lid back on for now. Um, we wouldn't add it just yet, but in maybe two or three minutes we would. We'd add a good, good glug of white wine, would be my preference, because it has an acidity to it that balances nicely with the sweetness of the carrots, and the other vegetables in there. And that's sweet and sour, basically. I mean, sweet and sour is a lot of excitement for the palate. Okay, that's why folk love Chinese food so much, for instance. The Chinese love that sweet and sour thing. It, it cuts through a lot of their dishes, in actual fact, not just the obvious ones. Um, so yes, uh, and they call that, you know, what happens is you cook this stuff, particularly in a stainless steel pan, kind of sticks to the bottom a bit, and then you, when it's hot, you add the white wine, it fizzes and you stir it and it lifts up all those bits and pieces off the bottom of the pan and that adds to the flavor, providing you haven't burnt them, of course. And that's called deglazing the pan. That's an, another one of those French terms, um, well, anglicized French term anyway, that is used uh, to describe that, that process. And you would always do that after you've added all these other ingredients here, in fact. And then you would add your, your stock. Okay, but we're cooking a little differently here because we've got to stop jelly. So what I'm going to do now, in the interest of time, is I would normally cook this out a little bit more until these, this sweet potato softens a bit more, okay? But in the interest of not being up all night uploading a video to YouTube, which is incredibly slow, sort it out, YouTube, really. Uh, okay, so... You know, we have BT Infinity. BT could sort themselves out and all because actually it's really slow. Anyway, rant over. I'm going to get this stock cube and put it in there, okay? Right, and I'm also going to put the uh, apricot, the dried apricot and the garlic, which has been all prepared by my brilliant assistant and camera person here. Um, who, who, somebody said they needed to get a stool. I don't know, I guess I, look, I, guess, I guess I look like a giant compared to her. But anyway, so that's in there. The stock cube is in there. All right, let's give it a stir. You can smell that garlic. You can smell the apricot over the top of the garlic. Okay. 
and well it's it is a little too early for the broccoli okay so what i'm going to do is in the absence of the white wine this is the point at which i'm going to hit the pan can you hear that right the white wine would do that so i've deglazed the pan with some hot water from the kettle which boiled a few minutes ago okay now our sauce is starting to build. We've got the base of this sauce here. Okay. We're going to put the lid on for a couple of minutes and just allow that to come up to a good heat. Now, I'm trying to use less salt, so I'm not going to put any in because I'm actually, the more, the more vegetarian I become, actually what I mean to say is the longer that I and being a vegetarian, the more I'm enjoying the flavor of the vegetables in the dish. But to my mind, they absolutely need salt. Cooking without salt, to me, is, uh, is some sort of purgatory. But I'm using a little less. So it's about finding your balance and using decent sea salt. I, I, I would use sea salt over rock salt. Rock, rock salt is very difficult to gauge and is very strong. And uh, it takes a while to melt into the thing because you have to crush it and, you know, I don't know. I, I actually prefer sea salt. It's a really lovely, ozone-y kind of taste to it. Um, right. We also need to add some passata. So I'm going to do that at this stage. All right. Don't use loads. We don't want the dish to be swimming in it. We just want a bit. That's probably enough, okay? If it was the right time of year, I would chop up some San Marzano tomatoes or something, which are nice plum tomatoes that make a good sauce, and I would add them. But I'm adding the passata. It's a winter staple passata. Okay. Look at that. See, that's glossy. Now, that's glossy and rich because of the olive oil that's the backbone of that sauce without the olive oil you don't get that glossiness you won't get that flavor permeating through the pan okay again if you're worried about your waistline just eat less of it but for goodness sake don't shy away from using some good quality olive oil don't use the stuff with pomace oil and that in it i mean it's not really very nice and it's industrially extracted as well so it's not particularly good for you okay I'm not a big fan of rapeseed oil either, by the way. Can we I, use fine we, appointment for the queen? Yes. Lupa, extra virgin olive oil. Actually, I'm not sure where it comes from. It's, it's Spain. But I actually like an olive oil that has a very neutral flavor. Oils from the south of Spain, this is not. At least I don't think it is. Because it's just got a quite a mild, rich, glossy texture, flavor thing going on. And I prefer that to the very tart, acidic oils that you will get from the south of Spain. They're a classic, but they're more for putting on salads and things because they lend themselves well to the flavor profile in a salad. This, I think, is sort of rich, smooth, glossy, but it's not tart, and it's easy to, you know, you could drink it, it's not sort of acrid, so it lends itself very well to this kind of sauce. Right, the is in, in with the broccoli, we're going to sit the broccoli on top. I'm going to add a bit more water because the pan is looking a little dry to my to my mind. Okay, and I'm after that rich sauce at the end. I mean, I I don't know about you, but I'm not a big fan of dry food. So sauce is good in my book. Okay, you want to stir that in a bit. I can't do any fancy flipping with this pan or anything because it's too bloody heavy. Um, there you go, look. Okay. Right. Okay. That is basically, that is it. Now, we need to be a little bit patient and wait for it to cook. But don't go off and watch television or something because you'll forget about it, especially in this pan, it'll burn. So stay in the kitchen and watch it. It's only gonna take another, it's probably only gonna take another 10 minutes to cook that, okay? Um, and we'll probably end the video shortly because um, it takes long enough to upload it anyway. Uh, that's how to put the dish together. We cook it out for another 10 minutes or so. 
maybe when it's finished leave the lid on and let it sit for five minutes um, and, and then spoon it out into a bowl and eat it with a spoon and fork or something because you know what you can't pick sauce up with a with a with a knife and fork okay a spoon is good what do they call spoon in Italian cucchiaio yes a lot of people can't pronounce that and that probably sounds weird to Italians but anyway use a spoon okay we are having it with the leftover cauliflower cheese which is in the oven that was from the last video and that was very nice um, one of the things I'm gonna do soon is a risotto I love to cook risotto that's what we're gonna do maybe not next but soon okay um, that's a lot of fun to cook and the flavor is beautiful in the risotto and I'm not sure what the main ingredient in there will be it could be mushrooms fungi or I don't know it's going to be something vegetarian look out for it and I'll see you next time and thanks so much for watching bye bye